The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, October 16th, St. Gerard Magella. Pius IX called St. Gerard the perfect model of the lay brothers, and Leo XIII said that he was one of the most angelic young men God has given to men as a model. In his 29 years of life, the saint became the most famous thaumaturge of the 18th century. He was born in Muro, 70 kilometers from Naples. His father was a tailor. His mother, after Gerard's death, gave this testimony. My son was only happy when he was kneeling in church before the Blessed Sacrament. Often he would go in to pray and forget until lunchtime. At home he prayed all the time. Truly he was born for heaven. When Gerard was ten years old, his confessor gave him permission to receive communion every third day. As this was a time when the influence of Jansenism was still being felt, it shows that Gerard's confessor regarded him as a child exceptionally gifted for piety. When his father died, Gerard had to leave school and went to work as an apprentice tailor in the workshop of Martin Panuto, a very good man who understood and appreciated him. On the other hand, one of the employees was a very rough man who used to mistreat Gerardo and was even more infuriated by the patience with which he put up with his nonsense. Once he had learned his trade to perfection, Gerard asked to be admitted to the Capuchin convent in Muro, where his uncle was a friar, but he was rejected because of his youth and his delicate condition. He then entered to work as a servant in the house of the Bishop of Lacedonia. Humanly speaking, it was a bad choice, since the prelate was a man of irascible character who treated the young man with great rudeness. In spite of this, Gerard served him faithfully and without a complaint, until the bishop died in 1745. Then, Gerard returned to Muro and opened a satraria on his own. He used to give his mother a third of what he earned. The other third he distributed among the poor, and the rest he used to pay masses for the souls in purgatory. He spent many hours of the night praying in the cathedral and disciplined himself severely. When he was 23 years old, the fathers of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, recently founded, preached a mission in Moreau. The young man begged them to admit him as a lay brother, but his sickly appearance did not help him, and his mother and sisters had no desire to see him leave. Gerard insisted, however, and finally, Father Cafaro sent him to the house of Deliceto, where he was superior, with a message saying, I am sending you this useless little brother. But when Father Cafaro returned home, he immediately realized his mistake and granted him the habit. Gerard's brothers, seeing him work with great ardor, punctuality, and humility in the sacristy and in the garden, used to say, either he is a madman or he is a saint. The founder of the congregation, St. Alphonsus Liguori, understood that he was a saint and shortened his novitiate period. Brother Gerard made his profession in 1752. To the usual vows he added that of always doing what was, in his judgment, most pleasing to God. Father Tenoya, author of the biographies of St. Alphonsus and St. Gerard, who had been cured through the intercession of the latter, tells that one day, when the saint was a novice, he saw him praying before the tabernacle. Suddenly Gerard cried out, Lord, let me go, I beg you, for I have much to do. This is undoubtedly one of the most touching anecdotes in all hagiology. During the three years he lived after making his profession, the saint worked as a tailor and community nurse. He also used to beg alms from door to door, and the fathers liked to take him with them on their missions and retreats because he possessed the gift of reading in souls. There are more than 20 examples of cases in which the saint converted sinners, revealing to them their hidden wickedness. Supernatural phenomena abounded in the life of the little brother. It is said that on one occasion he was caught up in the air and traveled more than half a kilometer. The phenomenon of bilocation is also mentioned, and it is said that he possessed the gifts of prophecy, infused science, and dominion over animals. The only voice that managed to pull him out of his ecstasies was that of obedience. While in Naples, he witnessed the assassination of the Archpriest of Moro at the very moment when it was taking place 70 kilometers away. Moreover, on more than one occasion, he read the thoughts of absent persons. So profoundly did he know how to read the thoughts of the secretary of the Archbishop of Kanza that the latter changed his life and was reconciled with his wife so that all Rome spoke of the miracle. But the most extraordinary events in the life of St. Gerard are related to bilocation. It is said that he assisted a sick person in a hut in Capicelli and that, at the same time, he was chatting with a friend in the monastery of the same town. Once his superior went to look for him in his cell and did not find him there. Then he went to the chapel. 
where he found him in prayer. Where were you a moment ago? He asked him. In my cell, replied the little brother. Impossible, for I myself went twice to look for you. Then Gerard was forced to confess that, since he was in retreat, he had asked God to make him invisible so that they would let him pray in peace. The superior said to him, Well, for this time I forgive you, but do not ask God for that again. However, St. Gerard was not canonized for his miracles, for these were simply an effect of his holiness, and God could have arranged for the saint to perform no miracles at all without changing one iota, the goodness, charity, and devotion praised in the young Pius IX and Leo XIII. One of the most surprising results of his reputation for holiness was that his superiors allowed him to take on the direction of several communities of religious, something that lay brothers were not accustomed to do. St. Gerard spoke individually with each nun and used to give them conferences through the grill of the foyer, and he also gave advice by letter to various priests, religious, and superiors. Some of his letters are still preserved. There is nothing extraordinary in them. In sum, he simply expounds the duty of every Christian to serve God according to his own vocation. In others, he incites a superior to goodness, exhorts a novice to vigilance, reassures a parish priest, and preaches to everyone conformity to the divine will. In 1753, the theology students of Deliceto made a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Michael on Monte Gargano. Although they had only a few coins to cover the expenses of the journey, they felt safe because Brother Gerard went with them. And in fact, the saint saw to it that they lacked nothing during the nine days of the pilgrimage, which was a true succession of miracles. Exactly one year later, St. Gerard suffered one of the most terrible trials of his life. A young woman of licentious life named Nuria Caggiano, whom the saint had helped, accused him of having solicited her. St. Alphonsus immediately sent for the brother to Noshera. Thinking that his vow of perfection obliged him not to defend himself, Gerard kept silent. By doing so, he only embarrassed his superior, who could not believe him guilty. St. Alphonsus forbade him for a few weeks to receive communion and to speak to strangers. St. Gerard calmly replied, God, who is in heaven, will not fail to defend me. After a few weeks, Nerea and his accomplice confessed that they had slandered the little brother. St. Alphonsus asked his subject why he had not defended himself, and the latter replied, Father, don't we have a rule that forbids us to apologize? Naturally, the rule was not meant to apply in such cases. Margata to Naples, where the people besieged day and night the house of the Redemptorists to see the famous Thaumaturge. Finally, after four months, the superiors were forced to send Brother Gerard to the house in Caposele, where he was appointed porter. It was an office that especially pleased the young man. Tanoya wrote, At that time, our house was besieged by beggars. Brother Gerard looked after them, as a mother would have done. He had the art of making everyone happy, and the foolishness and malice of some of the pedigileños never made him lose his patience. During the harsh winter of that year, 200 people, including men, women, and children, came daily to the Redemptorist's house, and the saintly porter provided them with food, clothing, and fuel without anyone knowing where he got them from. In the spring of the following year, he went again to Naples. While passing through Calitri, where Father Margotta was originally from, the people attributed several miracles to him. When he returned to Caposele, his superiors put him in charge of supervising the buildings that were being constructed. On a certain Friday, when there was not a single cent in the house to pay the workers, the prayers of the holy little brother moved an unexpected benefactor to give away enough to get out of trouble. St. Gerard spent the summer begging for alms for the construction, but the heat of southern Italy took a toll on his health, and in the months of July and August, the saint quickly weakened. He had to spend a week in bed in Orvieto, where he cured another lay brother who had come to assist him and had fallen ill. He arrived at Caposella almost at a crawl. In September, he was able to leave his bed for a few days, but fell ill again. His last weeks were a mixture of physical suffering and ecstasy, when his gifts of prophecy and infused science reached an extraordinary degree. He died on the date and time he had predicted, shortly before midnight on October 15, 1755. He was canonized in 1904.